over a year ago since uh, you got the news of your Oscar nomination. How did you hear about it? I was um, sitting with my father in Dundrum having a cup of coffee and the phone rang and it was a friend of mine, Anne Mulligan, who lives in New York, uh, being quite hysterical on the phone. And I thought something dreadful had happened in her life and I said, look, calm down, phone me back in about 10 minutes. And I put the phone down and I went in and said to my father, something awful has happened, you know, the, the girl's in a dreadful state and the phone rang in 10 minutes and I went back in and ready for like really bad news. And she said, you have just been nominated for an Oscar. And then I started and I was going, <laughs> I, it was complete reversal of roles. And I remember putting the phone down and going into sitting with my father, Des, and saying, I've been nominated for an Oscar. And he kind of always cool under pressure said, that's very good news, Brenda. And I said, hold on a second, Des. I said, hold on a second. This means like there's a possibility that in, in like eight weeks time, I could have an Oscar sitting there in front of me, never for one moment thinking it would happen. That's how I heard the news. And in fact, the nomination almost was more exciting than winning in a strange way. Really? Because that was such a, an achievement totally out of the blue and five nominations. It wasn't just me, like it was five nominations that the joy in that and the surprise in that was almost better than winning. Not quite, but almost. Mm. So what was it like on the night then in Hollywood? Well, on the night, I mean, I've been asked this question so many times in the last year and I always say it is, it's, it's indescribable because I have nothing to compare it with. Um, it's like somebody knocking at the door and saying, do you want to come to the moon? You know, and you go, well, yes, you know. It's, it's weird. It's just weird. It's mad. Mm -hmm. Mad. And apparently when you're up there, you're only allowed 45 seconds to give your speech and then they start the music seconds. again. That's, and they, the band plays, you know, and the, I had seen that happening. And uh, luckily I was sitting, where I was sitting in the front row, was right beside the microphone. Like Daniel, when he won, had to like go up and walk, walk to the very far side because they had changed just for variety, I suppose. Um, so I didn't have to kind of go too far and there's somebody screaming in your ear 45 seconds and as it takes 45 seconds to remember your name under those circumstances. And the thing that really threw me was like I got up the steps, didn't fall over, that was great, and Kevin Klein handed me the Oscar and you turn around and they don't put the house lights down. And every single film star that I paid two and sixpence in the Odeon and on drum to see was sitting there looking at me, waiting for me to say something. That's terrifying. And 45 seconds, that's as long as we've been... I've been answering your question. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, what was the Oscar campaign like? You obviously had to do a whole lot of interviews and promotion for the film. That was very difficult. I found that very difficult and very intrusive. I mean, it's funny. I just got back from, from Bristol via Hollyhead last night and I was kind of lying on the bed, knackered, the way you do. And there was a programme on about the Tinsel Town or something and about Arnold Schwarzenegger, how he plays the game of the machine and how he publicizes the films and thinks it's part of your job to do that and I he, he, he has a point it is part of your job to do it but you don't have to, you don't have training for that nobody tells you how to do this thing of sitting in the Bel Air Hotel in Los Angeles for three weeks and you have camera crews like this coming in every half an hour um, it's torturous because you've no you don't know how to do it, you know, and you're, you're being polite and you're trying to be a good interviewee and everything else it's very very disturbing you know, and, and things that you would have trouble talking to your best friends about, they expect you to come forth with immediately. They come up with really personal really questions. Really personal questions, you know, and, and they want the dirt on you, basically. <laughs>